Hey Tubes, Jen, I just made it back my final LEGO Star Wars 2016 Winter Set Review. And so to finish off this line, I'm doing the Resistance Troop Transport, set number 75140, ages 8 to 14, comes with 646 pieces and is retailing for £60 or $70. So this is the most expensive and the largest of the sets we've got from this line, which funny enough, just like the 2015 Winter Line with the Wookiee Gunship, this set really was not seen a lot at all. In fact, to the point where I actively had to look for this set and I actually knew what the set looked like to even find this thing. This was, um, of course, when General Leia and Han met for the first time after, you know, 30 years or whatever, when the First Order had just attacked Takodana and this landed to, to, you know, release the resistance troops. That's when we saw this and it was literally in the background. We saw it for like two seconds. You, don't be, you know, annoyed or whatever if you didn't notice it. I'm not sure a lot of people did. To be honest, you knew, unless you actually knew what the set looked like, you really really wouldn't notice it at all. So it's kind of a little surprising they once again decided to make the largest set a set no one knows about, just like they did last year with the Wookiee Gunship, but still, I'm not Lego, they can do what they like. I still think it's a pretty cool set and I think it's a pretty cool design. Funny enough, I suppose this will be the gunship of the new trilogy, although I think a lot of people are going to want to buy the uh, uh, resistance, sorry, the first order transporter more than the resistance troop transporter. Not necessarily, well, no, actually no, because it is a better set actually, but also for other reasons, because the minifigures are just better and just, eh, let's be honest, we all prefer the, the um, first order transporter than the resistance troop transporter, but still. Anyway, that is it then. Let us go straight now into the minifigure, starting off with Princess slash General Leia. So starting off, we have Princess Leia, although in actual fact she's called General Leia, but I don't blame Lego for this once again, just like a lot of other things with the Force Awakens sets, because at the end of the day, they didn't have to make these somewhat early, and they just, well, things just weren't available to them, or perhaps the actual film crew hadn't decided what to call it yet. But still, this is General Leia, or Princess Leia, or whatever, played by Cara Fisher, of course, who came back to reprise her role as Princess Leia, like 30 years later. Still, the minifigure itself is pretty plain, really not much to say about it. I think it does capture General Leia pretty well, because from what I remember, because by the way, I've only seen the film once, despite the fact that it seems like everyone else has seen it like a thousand times, I only had the money to buy it, uh, sorry, to like go to see the film once, believe me, I would have seen it more if I could. Still, uh, General Leia, from what I remember, this is pretty accurate, you do see a, a fair amount, and I'm not surprised at all the fact that we get her in a set, because she is a fairly main character, although of course there was a little criticism about the fact she didn't, she didn't have to be in the film, like she wasn't really that necessary, and they just got her back because, you know, they wanted the old actors, but, you know, whatever, either way, the old actors are back, and I thought it was still pretty cool. So, she's got this sort of lime green kind of colouring with the arms and the legs, which I believe we have seen before, actually. This is not particularly, well, no, it is particularly rare, I guess, especially in Star Wars sets, obviously, because mostly it's, you know, a lot of blacks and whites and all that kind of stuff. But it is, has been seen before, because I do have some Star Wars minifigures with the same colour. I can't remember which, maybe like the Endor Troopers, but I know there are some other Troopers who have this sort of colouring. So, still, it is kind of rare, though, so I guess it's kind of cool. And, of course, it matches her, like, um, not, is that shirt? Or, I don't know, sort of under jacket? thing, whatever it is, you know, you can see there the same sort of colouring, very nice, and we do have a bit of back printing, not much to say there, very plain, all good stuff. This hairpiece, I do believe is new, I'm pretty sure it is new, if it isn't new, then it fits her perfectly, you know, it goes really well, uh, although, I'm, now I may be wrong, I really may be wrong, but to me, her hair in the film was a little darker? This is more blonde, kind of. It's not full-on blonde like Luke, but it's it's just, I don't know. It, I thought it was a little darker, but I might be wrong with that. Don't quote me. Still, very nice. She comes with a little pistol. Really not to say there. We don't ever see her in action, because let's be honest, you know, Carrie Fisher is not exactly the youngest person in the world. But, um, yeah, so you can see her facial expression is just kind of, you know, tired of life, something. <laughs> and we've got the um, happy facial expression on the back, like, you know, uh, found Han Solo or something along those lines. So that's pretty cool. So if you're the Millennium Falcon, then you can match um, Han Solo and General Leia here together. You know, make a nice little pair. You know, it's kind of cool. But yeah, so she's a pretty cool minifigure. Even though you would think um, she may be kind of uh, a, a popular in terms of like she might go up in prize very much. I don't think we're going to see her in many other sets. In all honesty, I actually don't think she will. I don't think this minifigure will be that much wanted. Yeah, it's cool to get, you know, a new version, but let's be completely honest, she didn't play a massively major role in it. I mean, she did. Like, she was in the film quite a lot, and she, like, gave the plans and stuff. But in terms of, like, action, in terms of scenes, you know, where she actually did stuff, 
uh, yeah, she wasn't that massive a role. So, you know, also I don't think she's going to be the biggest thing that kids are going to want. So, yeah, it's still cool to have her, but I don't think we're going to see her again. Uh, so, yeah, it's cool to have her, I suppose. But in all honesty, you know, she's not as good as I think you may hope she is. Even though she's new and she's unique and all that kind of stuff. It's just kind of, yeah, she's cool, but... You know, there's not a massive amount to her, <laughs> more or less. Anyway, that is it to her then. Let's now go on to Admiral Akbar. All right, so next up we have Admiral Akbar, who I'm actually really, really glad was in the film. I really didn't expect it because Admiral Akbar, I mean, at the end of the day, when you really think about it, he's become more or less really popular just through what he said, you know, it's a trap thing. But no, honestly, when you really think about it, he wasn't in episode six that much. So I'm actually really glad they brought him into episode seven. I think it's really cool. But he has been changed, like in terms of not just the minifigure, but the actual character. Uh, from episode 6 to 7, because of course it was 30 years later. So I presume this is what Mon Calamarians, is that a thing? Yeah. Uh, I presume that's what they look like when they age, you know, they get these sort of dark spots or something on their head. I don't know, I guess that's what happens. He comes with a little pistol as well, and a cup. Funny enough, when I last got him in, I believe that he last came in the 2013 A-Wing. I think that was the last version. In that version, he also came with a cup. So, <laughs> how about that? I'm not sure that's an inside joke within Lego or something or whatever, but still, he comes with the cup again. I don't actually remember him with the cup. In fact, I don't remember him very much at all. Uh, he, he didn't really have much of a role, to be honest with you. I mean, I may be wrong. Again, I've only seen the film once, and I really want to see it again. But I can't remember how much of a major role. I think it was, again, just in there kind of for fan value. But still, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was kind of cool. His printing, however, is not that um, uh, advanced, to be honest with you. It's not that complicated. He does have some leg printing, though. It does sort of go down, because I presume he's sort of wearing one of those skirt things that, you know, you sometimes see, like, Jedi or wear, whatever wear. Uh, back printing, of course, is very plain. Really not much to say there whatsoever. His head is also hard plastic, just like all other, really. You know, just like, um, what's, his, what's her name? I can't remember. This... This, this this person, what's her name? Uh, something. <laughs> the point is that his head's plastic, is what I'm trying to get at. Uh, and yeah, he's got some pretty nice printing there on his torso, but really nothing too special, you know. All that good stuff, and uh, yeah, very nice. Is it just me? I believe his skin tone has got a bit darker. Again, I think it's just a thing that happens to Moncalamarians when they age, but still... I'm really glad they had him in the set, to be honest with you. Again, even though, like, General Leia, I don't think he's going to be that much wanted, I still think he's really cool. And in all honesty, I'm going to say, he's probably my favourite minifigure of the set, even though I can't really ever use him. I mean, I still like, make a Force Awakens thing. <laughs> I, I'm really glad we got him, because I think he's really cool. And I just love Amrak Bar, because, let's be honest, who doesn't? But still, there you go, that's Amrak Bar. Let's now move on to the two Resistance uh, Troopers. Alright, so next that we have one of our first of our resistance troopers, just as we got in the battle packs. These guys are very similar other than just the fact they've got slightly different torch printing and their faces are slightly different. Saying that though, I am glad about that because a thing that I think most people are annoyed about with, you know, when it comes to troopers like stormtroopers or first order troopers is the fact they all have the same faces when they are not the same person. They are not all clones. So I do like the fact that they do get different faces and different torsos with the resistance troopers, which is pretty cool. Uh, also, carrying on the tradition that we got in the First Order transporter from last year, these weapons, I'm not sure you can remake it out, I think maybe a little, but these are different colours to the regular black weapons to kind of, um, you know, carry on the tradition that we got with the other Resistance Troopers, which, by the way, don't seem to make any sense now, if you really think about it, those Resistance Troopers look so plain, even compared to these guys, but still... Uh, anyway, so I, I just really hope that, I really wish the guys from the battle pack got those guns as opposed to the flick whatever things. But anyway, still, this, um, torso is exactly the same one we got in the battle pack as well, as more or less all of them is. I'm pretty sure the faces as well, I'm pretty sure, yeah. This is the Lex Luthor face, of course. Um, and I'm pretty sure this is the same one we got in the battle pack. I'm not entirely sure, I can't remember, but still, pretty nice. All good stuff. I've shown you in the battle pack. You can check it out if you want to. Funny enough, I don't know why, for some reason, on some sets, like including this one, on the box, it's got one of the guys, like, with his visor down, the other one with the visor up. I mean, this looks ridiculous to me. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. It looks ridiculous. It looks just ridiculous. I'm sorry, it just does. But uh, still, I think it looks really cool, and I think this guy is really cool as well. Carrying the back printing you see there. Very nice. All very good stuff. Uh, and, yeah, to be honest, that's the Resistance Trooper. I'm glad we did get two of them, even though I've got four, have I? Yeah, I think I've got four of the Battle Pack or something, because, actually, <laughs> funny enough, unlike most people, I'm collecting more of my Rebel and Resistance Trooper army rather than my First Order, which is weird, but, you know, until they come out with a better Battle Pack, then I'm not going to spend so much on trying to get a massive army, so, yeah. Still, 
he's a really cool guy, and it's always nice to add more to your collection. So very nice, you know, build your resistance. Yeah, anyway, let's now go and move on to the next one, which really is not much different, but still is looking. And finally, finishing off, just a quick little overview of this other one, which is slightly different to the other one, just in the way that the face printing is slightly different, you know, it's, it's kind of, I suppose, more happy, although I wouldn't really say it's happy, it's just not as sad, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but still, yeah, you can see, very nice, and the torso printing is also somewhat different. He's got the Rebel Emblem, uh, Emblem, is that what you call it? I think that's what you call it, Symbol, whatever it is. Uh, which I'm not sure if that's the also the symbol for the resistance. It might be, and that is somewhat logical. You know, why would they change the symbol? But I don't know, maybe. You see on the back printing there, and also kind of got a hood, that kind of stuff, which seems weird. Why would you have a hood when you've got a helmet on? But still, very nice, pretty plain, nothing too special to say. There you go, it's nice that we get two of them, as I said. And yeah, build your resistance army, <laughs> which I'm trying to do because I think they're actually really cool. So yeah. Anyway, let's now go and move on to the actual resistance troop transport. All right, so moving on to the set itself, of course, you get a brick separator, nothing too special there. And we get another spring-loaded shooter, which I will show you in a second where they are. Okay, so the set itself, as I've said a few times, it's a pretty cool set, and for a while, actually, it was my favorite set of the year. Although I'm not sure anymore, quite frankly. I'd say the design, as a lot of people have said, it does look very similar to the B-Wing in terms of its streamlined kind of design. Uh, and I have to agree with you there, you know, with the blasts at this end, the cockpit that end, it does remind me very much of the B-Wing, other than the fact the wings do not pop up, although these pop up, so, yeah. Still, though, I think the design is pretty cool. I'm a little iffy, though, now on it, because at first I thought it was really cool, but, eh, I don't know. Now, it's, it's, it's a little weird, especially for a gunship. For a gunship design, it's just a little odd, to be honest with you. It looks more of a pirate vehicle, and actually I would have expected the pirates to have come in this vehicle, rather than, say, like the Millennium Falcon or something, but still... It's no big deal. Uh, that's not really a thing with Lego. That's just a thing with the actual design in Star Wars, I guess. So, yeah. Anyway, moving on then. This does have a number of stickers. Like, seriously, I kind of almost was shocked how many stickers this has. It's kind of insane. There's literally stickers from end to end from here. Going two on there. Two. Uh, is that two or is that one? I think it's one. Uh, and then you've got, like, three or four. Or, and there's three on the cockpit alone. You've got one there, one there. One there, one there. I mean... <laughs> Two on the back. I mean, there's just a whole host of stickers all over the place. I can't remember how many are inside. So that's a little annoying. I wish there had been at least one printed piece, but still, whatever. We'll go from the cockpit end then and move forward. Oh, yeah, that's another sticker, by the way. <laughs> anyway, so the cockpit, I'm not going to lie, it's actually a little difficult to open, in fact, just because I suppose my fingers are just too fat. So we'll just take this off for easy access and try to pry it open, like so. By the way, yes, my sticker putting techniques are not the best. Don't judge me. Um, anyway though, <laughs> anyway though, opening up the cockpit, very simply, got another sticker in there, that's a printed piece, whoopee-doo, anyway, so you can put a person in there, of course, this is nowhere near size accurate, the actual thing is meant to be a lot larger, because it is a gunship, but still, very nice, putting this down, uh, we've got two, oh yeah, again, more stickers, <laughs> got these two flaps here, on either end, which I guess are meant to help with, you know, Stabilization and another sticker. Wow, I'm just, I'm just nosing as I go, but still. By the way, sorry, it may be a little dusty. I've literally had this well ever since I built it. You know, the beginning of January or something, <laughs> and I've just been so busy. But still, moving to the back, you can see the engine design on both sides. Very nice, by the way. Can I just say? I don't know why. I really love the engine design. I just think it looks so cool, in my opinion. But still, uh, you've got these flaps here, which don't really move. I think they're more there for decoration, which is very nice. Although on this side. This, uh, no, sorry, they don't move. I, I, I thought I was thinking that you got to push this one up. But no, in actual fact, you just use your finger, because um, I'll show you the spring load shooters. The other two are here. They're not on that side. Uh, fortunately, though, they're not very obvious. Like, they are kind of just hidden away there, so it's not like, you know, oh, they're just stuck out. Like, um, I can't think of a set, but some sets, like, say, I don't know, the battle on Seleucami, that bark speeder, I think it looked terrible because it was just stuck on there and it was just ridiculous. This, however, I really don't mind because it's not in the way, you know, it's not easily, like, you can't easily just sort of, you know, flick it, you know, you've got to actually deliberately do it for it to happen. But you can see on the back, then you simply push it down, and there you go, fires out, all good stuff. Uh, again, engine design, very nice. I'm liking it. It's very simple build. You can easily take it apart like so. And, of course, the exact same on this side as well. So I do like that feature, even though, of course, it's not really meant to. That's not like an actual feature. I just like the fact that it's kind of easily 
take partable, if, there, if that's a thing. But still, uh, nothing really around this side. Although, funny enough, I haven't actually seen these pieces for a while. These are antenna pieces, and it's really cool to get them. In fact, I think you get a spare as well, so that's very nice as well. And uh, I guess these are meant to be guns? I'm not sure if they are actually meant to be antennas. I can't remember what the set, like the actual vehicle in Star Wars look like that well. But still, moving on then. Uh, going to the top, which I suppose will be the main feature, we'll just start here. This, of course, can fold down, this is where everyone runs out, and this is another thing, which again, is nothing to do with the set, just more the vehicle in Star Wars. This seems like such a terrible thing, because it's like, you've got such a large area here where troopers are meant to be, and there's only a little flap. I don't know. Again, this is not size accurate, but still, it just seems like you can make that larger, and you know, more troops can get out quicker. In all honesty, the Republic gunship, in my opinion, is just the best type of gunship. It's just such a good design. But still, anyway. So, uh, also, because your fingers can't fit in there, obviously, um, <laughs> these things do open either side. So, yeah, just fold up. All good, good. And also, they can, like, bolt down with, uh, where is it? I can't, I can't tell. Oh, wait, no, sorry, it's just friction. I thought there was, like, a pin or something. But no, in actual fact, this, you see this here? It basically just flaps there. And, you know, it just keeps it there so it doesn't literally fall down. So, in actual fact, it's just there by gravity. So, that's actually a pretty cool design. But still, looking inside, there, and it's pretty spacious. You can fit quite a few people, which is pretty nice, I guess. And you've got a control panel there and on either side. So, people, I guess, are meant to sit there and all that good stuff. For a long time, actually, I thought this was meant to be a skate pod on the back. So, yeah, but still, uh, just very nice. Quite a lot of space. And, of course, we've got the two orange pegs, which we don't see that often. We don't see orange pegs, but still, orange pegs. Uh, to put weapons on, so that's very nice as well. All good stuff, and as I've said, this is a sticker. Very cool. Uh, yeah, but I'm pretty sure that then is everything to the set. You can see under here a lot of these, not slope pieces, what are they called? Uh, I don't know, smooth pieces? Smooth tile kind of pieces? I'm sorry, I don't know. I'm not I'm not a brick linker. Is that a thing? A brick linker? But I don't really know the, the, the specific names of every piece. Still, uh, a lot of these pieces here, which it really does not make any sense whatsoever, because I'm pretty sure this is meant to fly. We saw it fly in the film, so, you know, this generally you don't have that for hover vehicles. It's the same thing as like, the first order transporter, where it had the wheels, when it wasn't meant to do that. But I guess, just like every other set, LEGO wasn't 100% sure whether it was meant to fly or hover. Um, but, you know, so they just added them, you know, just cuz. So, yeah, it's still pretty cool, though. Looking around, the whole um, design of it, I like the colours, you can see, and I think this actually is really good, because one of the things apparently back in the 70s that really caught the attention of a lot of people when it came to Star Wars was the fact it looked so real, and I like the fact that with this, it's not so sort of clean almost, in terms of, I mean it's not, because it's dusty, but <laughs> in terms of the actual vehicle itself, you know, the colours are slightly different, like say, this side, it's slightly different to that side, and just the whole thing of it, it feels like it's a proper vehicle that, you know, be using the military and things like that, so... Just, yeah, very cool, very nice, and I'm liking the design of it, and I'm glad I picked it up. Saying that, though, I'm definitely going to get more of the first order transporter than I am going to get of this. I don't think anyone's going to get more than one. Although, I know, I think some people will, let's be completely honest. Some YouTubers out there, we all know who we're talking about, some YouTubers are just going to buy, like, ten of them. But, yeah, <laughs> anyway, it's still a cool vehicle. I very much enjoy having it, and, I'm, and I would very much recommend getting it. Is it my favourite of this line? Eh, maybe, but, yeah, still... Let's go now on to the instructions of the box and include this review. Alright, so the instructions then. This is the biggest instructions, of course, from this line. Moving straight to the back. The same thing we've got with every other thing. Don't really think I need to show you that again. Uh, so, just going through the sheet, uh, features, as I said before, you know, just flick that down and that fires out. You can stick a person in the cockpit. Very cool. And, of course, you can fit quite a few people in the open bay area there. Very nice. A lot of pieces, I mean 646, but a lot of different elements. Like there's, as you well know, there are some, like uh, that piece right there, we've got like 10 of them. But in all honesty, a lot of these pieces, they're just kind of unique in terms of like, you don't have a ton of multiples of things. Like it's not like, oh, 100 of these pieces and 100 of these pieces. Like well, there's a lot of different ones, you know, to build this. So it's, that's a pretty cool design, I'm enjoying that. But uh, yeah, like, what is that, 79 or 78 pages of build. So, pretty cool. But yeah... All cool stuff. Got, of course, Kylo around the corner there. Very nice. Sporting his lightsaber. And this, I believe, is on Takodana as well. Being chased by some TIE fighters in the background there. Very cool. But, yeah. Those are the instructions. Let's go now onto the box. 
The box then, again, is the largest of the sets. Actually, funny enough, it's the exact same size as the first order transporter um, box, which is, you know, understandable, because they are very similar. They're basically the exact opposites to each other, aren't they? But then you've got the uh, minifigures down there, and of course, the exact same as the instruction manual, you know, same sort of art. So moving straight to the back, uh, you can see here, by, by the way, sorry for my sellotape skills, I'm, I'm not good. Anyway, um, you can see here, we've got some weapons, which is very nice. Actually, apparently it comes with three. I'm unaware of this. Oh, apparently, I'm sorry guys, I was clearly unaware that it came with three. I thought it came with two pistols and two of them, but it even shows in the box it comes with two of them. I don't know, I don't know what's happening, man. Anyway, so you can see here, they're meant to sit there, apparently. All good stuff. Uh, yeah. Just going over the features I have also mentioned, very nice, and looking there, very nice, looks very cool. All that stuff, it's nice design, streamlined, uh, but in all honesty, not my favourite design for a gunship. I am very much partial to the Republic gunship and the First Order transporter. I mean, I know, okay, I just clarify, I know that it's not actually called a gunship, these things, but let's be honest, the First Order transporter is basically the gunship of the new trilogy, you know, it's meant to carry troops, it goes in space, all that kind of stuff. It's basically the same thing, right? So, that's just why I keep calling it a gunship, I'm just saying. Anyway, though, that is it then to the box and all that stuff. Let's go now and conclude my review of the Resistance Troop Transport. So, I thank you guys for watching my review of the Resistance Troop Transport. This is my last set of the uh, 2016 Winter Line, which is kind of sad. I have missed out a number of sets like the uh, Overwatch Jedi Starfighter thing and the Droid Escape and Kanan's Speeder Bike and whatever that stuff. In all honesty, I think the best out of them is the Droid Escape just because, funny enough, I actually like the set, believe it or not. I know it sounds weird because I have not liked any other Droid Escape, but the set itself, I think it's actually kind of cool. But in all honesty, it's just, it's £20. I just do not want to uh, spend on that, to be honest. It's just not good. Uh, I mean, it's not a bad set, but, you know, they're just alright, basically. So if you want to pick them up, I recommend going to see other reviews. Although, then again, they're not actually out in the US yet. I am very sorry about that, by the way. I don't have any idea why, but still, whatever. The point is, on to this review, the Resistance Troop Transport is definitely a very good set. And I would very much recommend it. I would say it would be about a 7 out of 10, definitely. Yes, the um, first order transporter, in my opinion, is better. But I think that is also partially down to design. I just like the design of the first order one more. And of course, Lego can't do anything about that. It's just, you know, Star Wars, you know, go complain to them. But in all honesty, you know, if you think about it as a gunship, the resistance troop transport is not amazing, in all honesty. I mean, I've actually just realised, and I'll show you in a second, that funny enough, a minifigure cannot fit through the door. Um, like fully standing up so yeah but still it's a pretty cool set and I would recommend picking it up and I've thought about it and yeah it probably still is my favourite set from this line I mean not including the battle packs because the battle packs are kind of a, a different opinion so it's like it's hard to quantify them but still it's a pretty cool set and I would recommend picking it up I still am glad I bought it although I'm probably not going to buy any more because you know and I think most people just want to buy the, uh, the first order one rather than the resistance one still there you go. So, thank you guys for watching this and all my other reviews. I hope you did very much enjoy them. I very much enjoyed doing them. Some of them took a little longer than I hoped. But if you did, please leave a like down below because that's what it's there for, the like button. So, you know, do that and all the good stuff. More stuff will be coming this year. I'm telling you right now, trust me, this year is going to be very good for my channel. I know I said that last year, but this year it's going to be... It's going to be good, guys. Trust me. It's going to be good. Okay, just just, just believe me on that. Just this once, just believe me. Cool? Cool. All right. Thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time with another LEGO Star Wars review. <sighs> Bye, troops. It comes with 646 pieces and it's going to be retained for £60 or $70. That is when it's finally re Oh no, actually, shit. <laughs> I didn't realise it has been retained. This vehicle was in that scene where Han and Leia finally meet up again. It literally was in the background. No, it wasn't. Where was it? I don't remember.